Viewer discretion is advised. Remaining suspects in Andrea Barrett's death have a case to answer to, says lawyer. Criminal law attorney Farid Ali says there is still a case to be established in the kidnapping and death of Andrea Barrett, notwithstanding the deaths of two suspects. Ali points out there were initially seven persons arrested, and while two of those suspects are now deceased, Joel Balcon, who is believed to have been the mastermind and main person involved in the kidnapping of Andrea Barrett, and Andrew Morris, there are still unanswered questions. We've had seven persons arrested in this matter, according to my calculations, Ali surmises. Three were released, two are dead, and we are down to two persons. There is in law what we call joint enterprise, and though we may not have a determination before a court as to whether those two persons are substantively the cause of the death, he explains, the determination of the matter before the court moving forward would pivot on the nature and the substance of the evidence the police have gathered. The criminal law specialist says there are still suspects in police custody whose part in Andrea's kidnapping and death have not been established. He illustrates his point with a joint enterprise scenario involving felony murder. If I and another individual embark on a criminal activity and our intention may have been to rob, and in the process of robbery, one of us departs from the agreed plan and we don't rob, one of us kills, the other person who doesn't rob is equally responsible for the activity of the other individual because they embarked on the illegal activity together. 23-year-old Andrea Barrett went missing after she entered what she believed to be a taxi on King Street in Arima on Friday 29th, January 2021. Her body was found a week later in a forested area at the heights of Aripo. First autopsy inconclusive. The family of Andrea Barrett was expecting answers in the death of the 23-year-old Arima magistrate's clerk, but an autopsy performed yesterday at the Forensic Sciences Center by pathologist Dr. Sonu Shekar Gajula proved inconclusive. It means that at this stage, police cannot charge anyone for murder. The key suspect, who was on bail when police held him, despite having over 45 pending cases in court, died in hospital a day ago. Barrett's tragic end triggered an outpouring of grief and anger across the nation, five days after her decomposed body was found off a precipice in the heights of Aripo last Wednesday, after she had been kidnapped by two men in Arima on January 29th. Homicide investigators told Guardian Media that due to the advanced decomposed state of the body, they could not say with any certainty how she died. Sources say that Barrett's face was badly decomposed and there appeared to be several animal bites about her body. However, swabs were taken for testing to determine if the young woman was sexually assaulted. Private second autopsy reveals blow to Andrea's head. A private forensic autopsy done on the body of Andrea Barrett has revealed that she died from massive internal hemorrhaging after she was struck on the head with a blunt object that caused her to fall back and crack her skull. The autopsy was done at Boudou's funeral home in central Trinidad on Tuesday by forensic pathologist Professor Hubert Daisley after businessman and political activist Inshan Ishmael, along with two others, came together to pay for an independent autopsy. It followed an inconclusive post-mortem done on Monday by a pathologist at the Forensic Sciences Center in St. James. 
Ishmael, during a live broadcast on Facebook, said he was not pleased with the inconclusive report given on Monday. He said he was moved to have one done privately for the family's sake, as he strongly believed that Barrett's father, Randolph Barrett, needed closure as to why his only daughter died following her kidnapping on January 29th. The report from the initial post-mortem noted that the body was in an advanced state of decomposition which made it difficult for the pathologist to find a cause of death. Ishmael disclosed the results of the private autopsy in a Facebook broadcast yesterday, saying that he was in a state of shock and very emotional following Daly's findings. I was not satisfied with the inconclusive report that we got from the pathologist in relation to something like this. It stated that for me, who was in no training in this field, it is improbable that after just a few days that the report could be inconclusive, Ishmael said. I could tell you that Professor Daly's report and his findings are not inconclusive, and they found the reason for her death. Andrea was struck in the forehead with something blunt, and what that caused, she fell back and her skull fractured, and there was hemorrhaging inside. In fact, the whole area inside the skull, you could see where it was pinkish red, which meant that entire area there was hemorrhaging. So basically, she died from internal hemorrhaging, Ishmael said. Ishmael continued, also, what is interesting, and of course, Professor Daly has to verify this, there was an area in her arm where they found punctures, needle marks, but has to verify by the previous pathologist, or if that was an area where Andrew was injected, because on the picture that I saw, there were two puncture wounds, which is very visible. It has to be verified if that occurred during the autopsy done by the first pathologist. Ishmael also disclosed that samples were taken to determine if Barrett was sexually assaulted and added that the results should return in a week. He added, there was an area where the stomach, it was a particular color, which showed she was not being fed or was not eating. There, we have the results, and all I can tell you is that I am pissed. How could we have an autopsy result such as big as this so wrong before? But now we have clarity, he added. Senior homicide investigators told Guardian Media that there are two suspects that remain in custody following the death of Andrew Morris last week, and most recently, the main suspect, 37-year-old Joel Balcon, who died at the Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex around 2.20 p.m. yesterday, according to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service TTPS media release. The Guardian had exclusively reported several days ago that Balcon, who sustained injuries while in police custody, suffered spinal injuries and was in an unconscious state since he had been admitted to hospital. Balkan, who had a long rap sheet of offences, including rape, kidnapping, robbery, larceny and firearm matters, was the main person who masterminded the kidnapping that later ended in the death of Andrea Barrett. According to the TTPS media release of the initial 70 charges, he had 45 of those which were still pending in court. Investigators into Andrea's death and kidnapping had indicated in an exclusive Guardian Media story last Saturday that they believed Balkan used the heights of a repo as a dumping ground after the body of Andrea Barrett was found there. That find later prompted two searches on Friday and Sunday, where police recovered three sets of skeletal remains that have since been sent for testing. Balkan allegedly a suspect in his ex-girlfriend's murder. Balkan, they believe, may have also been responsible for the disappearance and murder of other women, including Terry Smurfett Gomez, who went missing in January 2008. Balkan, according to Gomez's relatives, had a child with her and repeatedly beat her during their relationship. 
Investigators involved in several cold cases say they will be turning their attention to missing women from East Trinidad who may have been murdered and never found. A senior homicide source said Balkan's post-mortem is expected to be performed on Thursday due to COVID regulations. While homicide investigators have widened their investigation into Balkan's activities, sources informed Guardian Media about fresh information concerning the investigation into Andrea Barrett's death, in which the two remaining suspects, a man and his wife, remain in police custody. Sources familiar with the case said that contrary to what had been reported in another newspaper, Morris had not withdrawn any cash at the ATM in Trin City. Senior investigators reveal that Balcon and the other suspect had driven to a savannah in Bonaire, Aruka, where they met with the suspect's wife on the night that Barrett went missing. Balkan later gave the couple Barrett's bank card and they went to the ATM in Trin City where they withdrew close to $5,000 before returning to meet Balkan in the savannah. With Barrett still alive in the back seat, it was here that the suspect and his wife were given Barrett's personal possessions including jewelry. It was that personal jewelry that police later found in the possession of the female suspect who has since been questioned extensively by investigators. Sources say that the couple later drove off in a Tita motor car after returning the car to Balkan, who sources say withdrew an additional $5,000 early Saturday morning from Barrett's account before returning the rental car that had been borrowed from Morris. It seems to me that there's much more to be revealed about this senseless kidnapping and murder of poor Andrea. Seven people planned and executed this awful crime for $10,000. It's crazy. It's ludicrous. There must be something more to what happened. It can't be that seven people did this for $10,000. I don't know how far $10,000 goes in Trinidad, plus $10,000 between seven people. It's absolutely ridiculous. There must be more, but unfortunately, two of these people have already died. But we need to know why they planned this elaborate murder of this young lady. The other depraved co-conspirators need to face the full brunt of the law because this was definitely not a random crime. Because if it were random, then the other female that was traveling in the taxi with Andrea would have also been robbed and murdered. So therefore, these seven people who conspired to do this, it's way bigger than what we think. Private autopsy concluded that Andrew Morris, another suspect in Andrea Barrett's murder, was beaten to death. The private autopsy on 35-year-old Andrew Solo Morris, one of two now dead suspects in the kidnapping and murder of Andrea Barrett, said he died from blunt force trauma, which caused his lungs to collapse. The second autopsy was done on Tuesday by pathologist Professor Hubert Daisley at the Simpsons Chapel, Coover. The day after the first, which was done at the Forensic Sciences Center, Daisley also did a second autopsy on Andrea Barrett on Tuesday and ruled she died from a fractured skull, while the first report was inconclusive. According to the family's attorney, Nestor Alloy Dinu, the pathologist said Morris suffered trauma to the skull and chest with a blunt object. He also had bilateral rib fractures, which made his lungs collapse and hemorrhaging of the brain. There were no marks of resistance on the body. Dinu, who was present during the autopsy, told Newsday. 
He added that the pathologist questioned the police version of events, given the severity of the injuries, and said Morris might not have been conscious when he was taken to the Arima Health Facility on January 31st. According to the post-mortem done on Monday at the Forensic Sciences Center, Morris's death was listed as impact trauma to the upper body. A report from the Arima Hospital where Morris died labeled his death unnatural. The report listed him as an assault victim. The referral for autopsy report from the Arima Health Facility said Morris complained of being assaulted. Under recent complaints, it read, Assault victim, head, chest and back, blunt trauma, acute kidney injury, since assault became presyncope and chest pain. On the heading, Provisional Assessment of Death, the author ticked unnatural, with a clinical diagnosis reading cardiopulmonary arrest, acute kidney injury, and rhabdomyolysis. Multiple bruises seen on chest, back, and face. Alert-oriented, however, complained of persistent chest discomfort, no respiratory distress, loss of consciousness, query-oriented on review. Chest x-ray showed no rib fracture, no hemothorax, which means blood between the chest wall and lungs, no pneumothorax, which means air collecting between the chest wall and lungs. Renal function test identified. Creatinine 3.3. Acute kidney injury. The summary read. This was supported by the second autopsy. Police claim that Morris, after being arrested at his Tampuna Road address in Arima, had to be subdued because he was behaving violently. It was during this alleged struggle that Morris supposedly fell but refused medical attention when offered. He was diabetic and hypertensive but reportedly refused food and was later taken to the health facility around 10 p.m. While at the hospital, Morris fell a second time. Police said he had fallen off a chair. His third fall happened when he went to give a urine sample. He was pronounced dead around 12.45 a.m. on Monday. His family were told of his death two days later. Morris was the first to die in police custody. He and longtime friend Devon Charles, otherwise called Joel Balkan, were held hours apart. Balkan died on February 8 after being in a coma at the intensive care unit, ICU, for at least six days. Police said he too had to be subdued after trying to escape. Director of the Police Complaints Authority, David West, told Guardian Media they are pursuing three separate investigations as he indicated the death of Morris will be looked at separately. The death of Balkan will be the basis of a second investigation and a third investigation will be launched as to why police did not submit files or attend court in several of the matters that Balkan had that were later dismissed by the courts.